Early voting is underway for next week's Georgia Senate runoff election between Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock and Republican challenger Herschel Walker. According to the Secretary of State's office, a record 239,000 Georgians cast their ballots Monday. Polling places opened Saturday after the state's Supreme Court rejected Republican attempts to delay early voting. More than 180,000 people showed up to vote over the weekend. Stephen Sloan is the Deputy Washington Bureau Chief for the Associated Press and joins me now to discuss the, the uh, race. Uh, Stephen, there's been a record turnout. What, what, are we, uh, what are the main issues driving this race, and are they any different than the ones that were driving it up to the, uh, the national election day? I'm not sure that this is really that the issues have really changed uh, from the election, but uh, you know this is really a, a, a question of you know whether uh, Democrats will be able to add that extra seat that would give them a clear majority in the in the Senate and allow them to uh, to move a little bit more uh, forcefully on on their priorities, or whether Republicans can try to to uh, keep it at 50-50, which would uh, complicate d uh, the Democratic agenda. So just to just you and me, we're going right down into the weeds, but it matters a little bit, which is that what is exactly the 51 votes when you say it makes it easier for, for Democrats? What would they get by getting to 51? Yeah, it's just one seat, but it actually does make quite a difference. Uh, right now, you know, if it's a 50 50 uh, split. Uh, Chuck Schumer, the Democratic leader in the Senate, has to negotiate a power sharing agreement with, uh, with Mitch McConnell, the Republican leader. Uh, that means for committee assignments, if it's 50-50 right now, as, as it is right now, uh, those committee assignment, those committees are, uh, are, are evenly split. If you have a 51 seat uh, majority in the Senate, that means that Democrats can get an extra seat on the uh, on those committees. That means that if there's a tie on those, it reduces the likelihood of a tie on those committees, uh, which just, again, makes it a little bit easier in such an evenly divided Congress right now. It makes it just a little bit easier to get something through. And, and uh, for someone like Kamala Harris, the vice president, it actually makes quite a difference. Uh, she has had to spend quite a bit of time during her vice presidency breaking tie votes. Uh, she, about 26 times she's had to break tie votes. Uh, that's twice what Mike Pence had to do when he was in the same position. And you'll remember Joe Biden when he was uh, vice president uh, never once had to cast a tie-breaking vote. If, uh, if there's not a 50-50 split anymore, uh, Kamala Harris's calendar might open up a little bit. <laughs> Um, which wouldn't hurt if you were thinking about someday running for president. Not that uh, we need to bring that in here, but let's uh, bring in another uh, past president. Um, there is no candidate who ran who was closer to former President Trump than Herschel Walker. What, uh, and there's obviously been a lot of criticism within the Republican ranks about how uh, Trump endorsed candidates have done in, in or did in, the, in this year's election. What role or what, what's the thinking about Donald Trump with respect? Has he been a part of this runoff at all? And, um, and just where it put him on stage here for this runoff? Well, you know, Herschel Walker really wouldn't be the, might not be the nominee if it weren't for Donald Trump, who, who really kind of elevated and helped clear the primary field. Herschel Walker is, uh, is a legendary name in Georgia. Uh, as, a, as a native of Georgia, I can attest to this, uh, given um, his football career. But Donald Trump really cleared the path for him during the primary earlier this year. But that is, it's been a very different dynamic during the runoff. He hasn't been around. Uh, Trump has not held any of his kind of famous rallies with Herschel Walker. And in part, I think, you know, that's, uh, it's, it's, it helps everybody right now. Um, Trump has had a hard time in Georgia. His preferred candidates have not always prevailed. His preferred candidate for governor, if you remember in the primary earlier this year, was trounced by, uh, by Brian Kemp by about 50 points. So Trump has always had a little bit of a, of a struggle in, in this state that's really changing. Uh, and I think on Trump's part, he doesn't want to necessarily be blamed. Uh, he doesn't want any more blame coming his way if, uh, if Herschel Walker were to lose. Right, right. All right, Stephen Sloan, thanks so much for being with it, with us. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me.